Hello students, today we are going to do Act 1, Scene 2 of Merchant of Venice. Act 1, Scene 2 may, before we proceed with the scenes, we have to look at again the mythological events. Like, one that you will be encountering in this is Colt. Colt means a young horse. And here it is uh, also referred to a foolish and inexperienced person which will be spoken about the Prince of Naples. Then comes County Palatine. County Palatine is an area which is uh, ruled by a count. Palatine means, County Palatine means, the count is somewhat like a king. Not exactly a king, but he has to give each and every report to the king. But he is the uh, ruler of the area that is given to him. So it is an area which is ruled by a count that is a local ruler or a nobleman. So in feudal times, feudal times means when the people had to, uh, you can say, give their uh, land to the usurers or to the landlords in order to get some money. So the counts they exercise royal authority. And uh, they ruled independently of the king, but at times they had to give some report to the king. So here, County Palatine will also be one of the suitors in this scene, about whom we will be speaking in the scene. Then comes Heraclitus. Heraclitus was uh, actually a weeping philosopher. He was Heraclitus of Ephesus. He was very much tired of the foolishness of people of the world and becoming, you can say, distracted or you can say he denounced the world. He was so much tired of the foolishness of the people that he renounced the world and he went to the hills. And here why uh, Heraclitus will be mentioned will be spoken in the scene about County Palatine. See, opposite of this is given as Democritus, who was also known as a laughing philosopher. Then comes Sibella. Sibella also will be seen in this scene. Sibella was actually a Greek uh, word known as prophetess. She was Sibyl of uh, Cume. She had received a boon from God Apollo that uh, that much grains of sand that she has in her hand, that long she will be living. But she forgot to ask for her youth. And so with age, as age grew up, as she grew in age, she began to shrink. And she became so small that she could be kept in a jar. Then comes Diana. Diana is actually the goddess of moon and hunting. She is also a symbol of chastity, which will be spoken of in this scene. Then Portia will be taking their names. Then comes shrive me as a word. Shrive me means listen to my offenses like a priest and grant forgiveness from God. Shrive me we will come to know. But later on at last Prince of Morocco comes in the scene. Then Portia speaks about him. That uh, instead of marrying him she would prefer that he would shrive me. That means he would listen to her offenses quietly like a priest and forgive her and ask a forgiveness from God also. So these mythological events we have learned here, that means we will be studying about a colt, which means a young horse and also a foolish person. Then county palatine may we have come to know who is a count. A count is used to rule a particular area and he behaves like a king of that area. Every order has to be carried out according to him. Heraclitus was also known as a weeping philosopher. He was, he belonged to Ephesus and he was very much depressed and he, uh, you can say fed up of the human affairs, the foolishness of humans. So he renounced the world and he went to the hymns. Then comes Sibella. Sibella will be studying. She got the uh, boon from Lord Apollo that as much grains of sand she has in hand, that long she will be living. But she forgot to ask about her youth. 
and so she shrunk in size and was could be kept in a jar. Then Dinah is there. Dinah is a goddess of moon and hunting. She is also the symbol of chastity. And uh, she was associated with wild animals and woodlands. Then comes Shrive Me. Shrive Me means listen to my offenses just like a priest and forgive me and also grant forgiveness by praying to God. Now let's look at the scene. We are going to study about Act 1 Scene 2 where we are introduced to the main uh, female, you know, female character of the drama Portia. She lives in Belmont. So this is a room in Portia's house where Portia and Nerissa both are there. Who is Nerissa? She is the lady in waiting. Lady in waiting means she is a maid servant but she has become a good friend of Portia. So any secrets Portia could confide in her. Now Portia says, by my troth, Nerissa, my little body is weary of this great world. By my troth means by my faith. So she wants to say that uh, if you ask me in reality, I am very much fed up of the worldly affairs and I have become tired so much. So Nerissa says, you would be sweet madam if your mysteries were in the same abundance as your good fortunes are. And yet for aught I see they are as sick that serve me with too much as they that starve with nothing. It is no mean happiness therefore to be seated in the main. Superfluity comes sooner by white hairs, but competency, competency lives long. So Nerissa says, Madam, it would be, you would be naturally, you would be tired because your miseries are of equal amount as your wealth and your happiness. And those who have got good fortunes or they have got a lot of wealth, they always keep on worrying. So, surfeed means having a lot, much more in abundance. So, those who have got so much in quantity with them, the wealth and everything, they are also prone to worrying. And those also who do not have anything and keep on starving, like the poor people, they also keep on worrying. And because of their uh, nature of worrying, they are prone to develop white hairs more early than their old age. So it is seen that those who have got so much and those who have got nothing, both of them are worried and so they are going to go older before their age. While those who do not have much or who do not have less are always living a life of satisfaction and they live longer. So Kosha says good sentences and well pronounced. Kosha says, well, you have said uh, we have explained things very well. Teresa says they would be better if well followed. Teresa says these sentences would be better if they are applied in the life of humans also. So Porsha says if to do were as easy as to know what were good to do, chapels would have been churches and poor men's cottages, princes' palaces. Porsha says, see, if to do were as easy as saying, then everything would have changed in the world. The small chapels would have turned into big churches and the cottages of the poor people would have turned into palaces. But this does not happen as such in the world. It is a good divine that follows his own instructions. I can easier teach 20 what were good to do to be done than be one of them to follow my own teaching. She says that, see, to teach is easy. To teach 20 people is easy, but to be part of them and follow your own teachings is quite difficult. So I can teach 20 people, but I cannot be a part of them in order to follow my instructions. The brain may devise laws for blood, but a hot temper leaps over a cold decree. Such a hair is madness that to skip over the meshes of God could counsel the cripple. But this reasoning is not in the fashion to choose me a husband. She says, brain may devise means our wise elders, they create laws for us. They create rules for us that we should follow. But the youth are quite impulsive. They do not try to obey whatever is given to them. And just like hares, hares are the rabbits, female rabbits. 
they try to cross the nets by jumping over them that come in the path similarly the youth they try to break the rules which are created by our elders but she says but uh, saying these things or reasoning about them or arguing about such things is useless for on my part why because i do not have the authority to use the word choose because i have no right to choose a husband or to reject somebody who i do not like because i am bound by my father's rules if not hard it is is it not hard narissa that i cannot choose one or nor refuse none she says narissa you can think yourself it is very hard to uh, reject anybody whom you do not like and to choose anybody whom you like narissa says your father was ever virtuous and holy man at the death have good inspirations narissa says see your father was a virtuous man and virtuous people at the time of the death get good inspirations due to which they leave some or the other uh, good things for their children similarly your father had good inspirations and that is why he devised a lottery of caskets having three caskets gold silver and lead and uh, he had devised them in such a way that whoever chooses the correct casket will be the right person to love and uh, but what warmth is there in your affection towards any of these princely suitors that are already come she says now i would like to know your opinion about the suitors that have already come to belmont that what do you think about them so kosha says i pray thee over name them and as thou namest them i will describe them and according to my description level at my affection Kosha says, "Okay, you. I request you that you take the uh, one by name, one by one their names, and I will tell you my views about them, and then we can measure to what extent I like them." So Narissa says, "The first one is Neapolitan prince, that is the prince of Naples." Kosha says, "Hey, there is a cold indeed. Now I have told you in the mythology, cold means a young horse and a foolish person, for he doth nothing but talk of his horse." and he makes a, is a great appropriation to his own good parts that he can show him himself she says that he is just like a young fool because he always starts speaking about his horses and he has no other talks apart from the horses he takes pride in uh, saying that i can show my horse also here one thing is not mentioned which is already there that hosha is apprehensive that um, she would not like to marry this person because she has heard that his mother had illicit relations with a blacksmith then narissa says okay tell me your opinion about the second suitor count palatine again we have learned in the mythology what is count who is the count a ruler of a local area who has got authority just like a king so he has come from palatinate Kosha says he does nothing but frown, as who should say, and you will not have me choose. He hears merry tales and smiles not. I fear he he will prove the weeping philosopher when he grows. Kosha says he is, does not do anything except for frowning. He has always a frowning expression on his face, and uh, he tries to show it doesn't matter to me if Kosha doesn't choose me. and whenever merry tales are told to him so that he he may laugh he does not laugh even at the merry tales so she says that i fear that he would in old age become a weeping philosopher weeping philosopher we have learned in mythology heraclitus of ephesus uh, being so full of unmannerly sadness in his youth because she says that in his youth only he seems to be grim wise age grim wise age means a serious person so later on in life when he grows old he will surely turn into a weeping philosopher so she said that uh, i would rather prefer marrying a dead skull with a bone in its pouch than marrying these two suitors the neapolitan prince and this county palatine so she says that god defend me from these two may god save me from these two Then Narissa says, "How say by French Lord Monsieur Bon?" Narissa says, "What about your opinion of the third one, French Lord Monsieur Bon?" 
Suppose as he is God made him, and therefore let him pass for a man is true. I know it is a sin to be a mocker, but he, why he hath a horse better than a near paladins, a better bad habit of frowning than the county paladine, he is very, he is every man and no man. If a throstle sing, he falls straight a capering. He will fence with his own shadow if I should marry him. So Bosha says, well, God made him. So let him be passed as a man, but I do not think he is a perfect man because he has got the quality of 20 people in him. Like he can frown much more than the county palatine. He speaks too much about his horses than the neo palatine friends. And it means that he is... He has qualities of every man, but he himself has no individual recognition of himself. If a throstle, throstle is a bird who sings song. If a throstle starts singing, he starts jumping. Straight a capering, he starts jumping at the song of the throstle. He will fence with his own shadow if I should marry. I should marry twenty husbands. If he would despise me, I would forgive him. For if he lo may love me to madness, I shall never defeat him. She says that when he is alone and he sees his own shadow, he tries to use a sword in order to fight with his own shadow. And she says that if, suppose, by chance, I happen to marry him, it would be like marrying 20 husbands. Because if he uh, would despise me, then Portia is ready to uh, forgive him. But if, suppose, he loves her, then she would not be able to return the love of twenty husbands. Then Nerissa speaks about the fourth one. She says, what about Falcon Bridge, the young baron of England? So Portia says, you know I say nothing to him, for he understands not me, nor I him. He hath neither Latin, French, nor Italian. And you will come into court and swear that I have a poor penny worth in the English. He is a proper man's picture, but alas, who could converse with a dumb show? How oddly he is suited, I think he bought his doublet in Italy, his round holes in France, his bonnet in Germany, and his behavior everywhere. Kosha says, see, I cannot speak to him. The reason is that I do not have, I do not know English. I do not have any knowledge of English, not even a penny worth. And he doesn't know our languages like Latin, French, Italian. So marrying to him would be like a dumb show. We would be only speaking to each other through gestures. Uh, he is a perfect man's picture means he is a very handsome person but there is no use marrying him. Because he doesn't know my language and I do not know his language. And he is oddly suited. That means he has a strange type of dress appearance because he has a doublet. Doublet means a jacket he bought from Italy, the hat he brought from Germany and the round hose means the tight breeches that are worn when you uh, go for hunting on a horse. The round hose is brought from France and his behavior from everywhere means he has gone to several places with a cosmopolitan type of person. So he has gone to several places and he has taken the behavior from all other places where he has visited. Then Nerissa says, what about the Scottish law, the fifth one? Nerissa says that uh, he had a neighborly charity in him. This was a taunting tone of Portia. She says that he is a charitable person in a taunting way. The reason is, one time the English man that means this uh, young baron of England had given a box, that means a punch near his ear, but he couldn't retaliate, he could not return that box to him, that means he could not take his revenge. So Scottish Lord was slightly power type of person, he said that when I am able to do it, I will surely return him whatever he gave me. And for this, the French Lord, Monsieur Le Bon, had... Uh, given him a company to whom to Scottish Lord that whenever you are uh, able to do it, I am there with you. Then Erisa asks about the sixth one, the young German, Duke of Saxony's nephew. So Portia says he is very wily in the morning when he is sober and most wily in the afternoon when he is drunk. 
when he is best he is a little more worse than a man she says that he is very even see bad in the morning when he wakes up in the morning he is he looks quite worse when in the afternoon he is sober he is serious he looks more bad in appearance when he is drunk then he looks the best in appearance and he is a little more worse than a man at that time when he is drunk and when he is worst he is little better than a beast so when he is worst in his uh, behavior in his manners then he looks just nearly to a beast and the worst fall that ever fell i hope i shall make shift to go without him she says i wish that he should not choose a correct basket but if this worst thing happens to me i will try to skip marrying him So Nerissa says, if uh, he should offer to choose and choose the right basket, you should refuse to perform your father's will. If you should refuse to accept him, Nerissa says, if suppose he happens to choose the right basket, then if you disagree to marry him, then it will be like going against your father's will. And uh, then Poosha says. that is why in order to remove our fe- my fear i request you to put a glass of rhenish wine an expensive wine on the wrong casket and if the devil is inside him the devil inside him is tempted to was that rhenish wine he would surely go to the wrong casket to have that wine and open that casket so i will be safe from such a danger that if he chooses the right casket what will happen Then Nerissa says, "Well, lady, you need not fear because uh, any of these lords, from any of these lords, as all of them have informed me that now they would not be participating in the lottery of caskets, and uh, they would not like to trouble you. So unless you may be won by some other son, then your father's imposition depending on the caskets." So Nerissa says that uh, you you do not uh, need to fear because all of them have informed me that now they are going from Belmont. They are not taking part in the lottery of baskets, and uh, so you do not need to worry unless a good person chooses the right basket and wins. Why these people are going away? You people must have been taught at school also that there were three O's that everyone had to pay. One is if you choose a wrong casket, you will leave Belmont immediately. Second is you will not disclose to anybody that which casket you have chosen. Third is you will not marry to any girl throughout your life, or you will not propose any girl for marriage once you choose a wrong casket. Then Portia says, if I live to be as old as Sibella, I will die as chaste as Diana. Unless I be obtained by manner of my father's will, I am glad this parcel of rumours are so reasonable. For there is not one among them but I doubt on his very absence, and I pray God grant him a fair departure. Portia, now here comes the term Sibella and Diana, which I told you in the mythological events. She said that if this way happens and all the suitors are going away, I will have to live like Sibella. And if Diana, I would die chaste. Chaste means pure, without any marriage. So that means becoming a virgin only. I will have to live my whole life and die like Diana, unless by chance it happens that somebody who, according to my father's will, is able to choose the right casket and wins me as his wife. Then she says, I am glad that this. a uh, group of poor is going away because none of them is such that i will remember him after going because i do not have any great affection for any of them so narissa says do you not remember lady in your father's time a venetian a scholar and a soldier that came hinder in the company of marcus of montferrat narissa says do you remember when your father was alive then marcus of montferrat had come here With a Venetian scholar and soldier, 
Then Portia says, yes, yes, I remember it was Bassanio. I think this was his name. Teresa says, true, madam. He of all the men that ever my foolish eyes looked upon was the best deserving of fair lady. So Teresa says, yes, ma'am, it's true. And according to my foolish eyes, because maybe I do not have any much authority to speak about your life, but I would like to suggest that this was the best boy, the best man from all of the men that I have seen, who would be a deserving candidate for this uh, lottery of casket, and he is fit to be uh, the right person for you. Kosha says, I remember him well, and I remember him worthy of that place. Kosha says, I remember him very well, and I know that he is worthy of praise as we are praising him. Then a servant comes in, and, uh, and they ask him, what is the news? Servant says, a four strangers seek for you, madam, to take their leave, and there is a forerunner coming from a fifth, the prince of Morocco, who brings word, the prince's master will be here tonight. Now, if you look, I have told you about six suitors, and the servant is saying that four suitors are about to go, and they are asking your leave. They are standing at the gate to take your departure. This means either Shakespeare has forgotten to write about the rest two suitors, or he doesn't seem that they are quite important to be mentioned. So here they have written that the Scottish and the English lords were added together because Scottish lord was the neighbor of the Englishman. And uh, so that is why two suitors are not given any importance. Maybe this is the main reason that at the end the servant says that four suitors are asking him. And the fifth one, Morocco is coming, although it will be the seventh one. Uh, and uh, Prince Morocco's servant has come in order to give you a message that he will be there, he is on the way. So Kosha says, if I could bid the fifth one welcome with so good heart as I bid the other four. Kosha says, Kosha says that uh, maybe if I could welcome this fifth prince with so much, but you can say with so much cheer and so much warmth, as happily I am bidding farewell to the rest of the suitors. And then she says that uh, if we have the condition of a saint and the complexion of a table, she said that if suppose he has a complexion of a, you can say a dark complexion or Complexion of a devil means dark complexion, but has a nature of a saint. Saint means who forgive everybody. Then I had rather he should shrive me than wife me. So she says that instead of marrying him, I would prefer shrive me. I have told you in the historical events, mythological events, that I would prefer that he listens to my offenses and forgives me every time. But you should not marry him. Come, Nerissa, let's go. Sirah, go before. Sirah means servant. You go before. We are coming. Whilst we shut the gate upon one who or another locks at the door. So she says that what is happening? As soon as one suitor is going, the other suitor is coming. And this is a quite tiring job for me to welcome one suitor and bidding farewell to the other suitors. Saying this, both Nerissa and Portia, they exit from the scene. So this way we have come to know that there were six suitors in the scene. One was Neo-Palatine Prince, then County Palatine, then uh, Monsieur Libon, the French Lord, then the English Baron of England, Scottish Lord, his neighbor, Duke of Saxony's nephew. And all the characteristics have been listed also. That Neo-Palatine Prince always talks about the horse. County Palatine always frowns and is said to be a weeping philosopher if he grows old and remains serious as now. Then uh, this Monsu Libon has got the characteristics of every man. So he is no man in himself. He has no individual personality of his own. And uh, marrying him would seem like marrying 20 husbands. So she will not be able to return the love of 20 people if they if he loves her. Then it was an English Lord Baron, young Baron of England. 
who was already suited he had had from germany then reaches from france doublet from italy and so on and uh, he didn't have the knowledge of french italian and latin while osha did not have a penny worth knowledge of english so it would be a dumb show if he marries him scottish lord was said to be a man with charitable nature and uh, this was just a taunt, taunt from the side of osha to say that he is a coward man he couldn't uh, retaliate or return back immediately to the english man who had given him a box near the ear then duke of saxony is that you is a drunkard so she says that he is just like a sponge a sponge which is soaked always in wine so she would not prefer to marry him she asked narissa to keep a rhenish wine glass of rhenish wine on top of a wrong casket so that he is tempted towards it and chooses the wrong casket but finally narissa informs her that all the suitors are not taking part in the a uh, lottery of caskets they have decided to take you then after that the fifth prince prince of morocco is coming the servant has given the given them the message so poesha says that instead of marrying him he, it would be better that if he has a saintly nature but complexion of a devil then he would forgive me for all my offenses rather than marry and then she says that uh, what is happening that once a suda is going the other is coming the suda is going the other is coming so she is quite tired of this job so this is the way the scene has finished and we have seen some mythological events this will help you to write the answers choose perfect keywords from your merchant of venice shakespeare and language while writing the answer if you would like to write the answer taking a quote take it from the shakespeare and language thank you we'll meet in the next video with other scenes other poems